Hey everybody, Robert here with Fiddleback Forge for Fiddleback Friday for August 30th, 2019. We've got uh, 13 pretty amazing knives for you today, 12 of which are Fiddleback Forge. One, are from, one is from Joey Berry, JB Knifeworks fame. Uh, if you haven't seen his work yet, you're in for a treat. I'm going to show that one last. I'm going to show you all the knives in hand. Um, if you want uh, more in-depth on the specs, uh, the best place to do that is go to the website, look at the most recent blog post we did up. Uh, let me actually show you uh, what that looks like here. Bear with me. Uh, so if you go to the site, this is uh, actually from my iPad. Uh, if you scroll down, you'll see all the menus and everything else. Uh, but you'll see um, on the news portion, if I refresh here anyway, under the news, you'll actually see Fiddleback Friday 8.30 right there. And you can actually look through and see uh, the exact specs, uh, including blade length and overall length. Um, I don't want to butcher those by doing it live. Um, so there you go on that. So fiddlebackforge.com, that's where all the knives will post tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as well. Uh, you'll just go under the uh, shop tab. Uh, for Fiddleback Friday, and they are there. They will be there at 9 p.m. sharp. Whoever completes the checkout first is the winner. So let's go ahead and get into the knives and let you see what these things look like in hand. If you've got any questions, uh, hit me up in the comments. I should be able to see them as I go along. Um, at least I'll try to keep up with them. Uh, I'll scan through them after as well if there's any. Uh, if you're watching this later on, uh, on a recording on either Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram, um, just shoot us a comment or, or a direct message, and we'll answer any questions that you have, uh, or if you need comparison photos, anything like that, hit us up, let us know. So let's get started with the first knife, and we're starting with the smallest ones going forward. So uh, this one is the Pocket Kephart. Uh, the handle material on this is a Raspberry Micarta. It's got black bolsters, black liners. It is in 330 seconds A2 steel, uh, and you can tell there that it's got a skeletonized full tang. So this is a shrunken down version of the Kephart model uh, that Andy came up with a few years back. Uh, and it's very popular for everyday carry. As you can see, it's a really good size small blade. Um, you can also tell uh, that it's a three finger blade. Uh, your thumb, your pinky rather, is gonna fit right behind the blade there. Um, it's just really great for a pocket sheath. It's gonna do uh, anything you need to do on a daily basis pretty well. I'm showing you the balance point right there. Um, just a fantastic, fantastic overall everyday carry knife. I really like the spalting on that one as well. And one thing I can tell you about this one is it actually feels a little bit thin in hand. Um, so if you'd like for your handles to feel a little bit more thin, uh, that one may be the ticket for you. And that Raspberry My Card is a new one for us. Uh, we haven't had that one before. Uh, let's go on to the next one, another really awesome EDC uh, sized knife. Uh, this one's the Esquire, which is actually one of the first Fiddleback Forge knives I ever owned personally, uh, which I still love. You can see it's got the swedge grind there in the top. This is the cross-cut micarta uh, that you've been seeing from us lately. Uh, we're absolutely in love with it, so we're using a lot of it. Um, it just turns out really wonderfully. It's almost a, a Phil back at the shop actually calls it woodish micarta because it looks a little bit like wood grain. Um, but this is a fantastic size for an EDC knife. It's a little bit longer in handle than the one you saw before and also a little more narrow in handle uh, than the pocket cap arch you saw previous to this. This one's got a skeletonized full tang, um, natural liners, white pin stripes, as you can see there. Um, just really great feel all around. No matter how you hold it, it's very, very comfortable. It's a very slim blade. It goes great in a pocket sheath as well. Um, can actually be a four tight four finger design. Um, and also right there on the pommel, you can actually see um, how they're designed to, to be the same shape as the top of your thumb. So if you do have to turn around and use it uh, in a reverse grip like that, still very, very comfortable. Uh, moving along to one of the newest models designed uh, you guys have seen this one before, the Snowbill. Uh, we've actually got two of them. This one's the first one. Uh, this one's in desert ironwood, black liners, lime pin stripes. As you can see, it's a tapered tang. Um, really great knife. When you first look at it, it's a little odd looking just because you're not used to seeing anything shaped like this. 
Um, it was actually inspired by a knife uh, made by a guy named Bill Snow uh, that Andy picked up at Blade Show, and he was just so impressed um, with that where that hump placement is. The reason being is you can start to tell right here, you want your ring finger to be on top of the hump, not in front of it, not wedged in front of it, not behind it necessarily, uh, but you want it right there on it. The amount of leverage and grip that this particular handle gives you, and given the blade shape is kind of a short uh, blade as well. It's just really great for really high leverage use where you're going to need a lot of uh, hand strength or you need a lot of grip strength to, to do what you need to do. So it's just a fantastic overall knife. Somebody did ask me uh, what I thought of it. Um, at first, when I first saw it, I was not a fan, honestly. When I picked it up and the more I've started handling it, um, the more I really like this knife. It's just a fantastic feel in hand. It doesn't look like it would be, but it's it's just amazing. Um, right there at the pommel, the way it's in, back inset, the way your pinky just locks in there. It's like your hands your hands locked in place on the front, your hands locked in place in the back. Um, that ring finger being humped like that gives you a ton of leverage. It's just a it's just a really great design in hand. Um, so if you can get past and not looking like the other knives in your collection, um, this one's a really great one to own for sure. Um, this one in particular, uh, let me look up the exact name of the Scarlet Burlap is what we've got on that one. Uh, black liners, white pinstripes, one eighth A2 steel, and it's a tapered tang as well. Uh, the one previous to this was a tapered tang as well. Um, it's not heavily tapered because keep in mind it is a shorter handle. Um, and Andy's not a big fan of super thin tapers. Um, he does them occasionally uh, just to prove that he can for, for those in doubt. But uh, he tends to like the, the tapers a little bit thicker um, because it brings the balance. It keeps the balance point between those first two sets of pins that you see on the handle there. So we're going to go ahead and move to the next one. Um, I know a couple of people that are going to be highly tempted by this because they collect this particular model. <coughs> no rest, 13. Um, but this one's called the Bush Boot. It is about as sexy of a knife as you can get with that swedge on the top, just the shape of it. Um, it's called the Bush Boot because it's inspired by more of a, a boot style knife. Um, but obviously it's, it's really good for bushcraft task and that kind of thing as well. So the Bush Boot name was born. You got a taper tang on that. The handle material, if you are wondering, which I'm sure you are, we're calling a Gold Rush Box Elder Burl. So it's a Box Elder Burl that's been dyed. And it's uh, just got this really nice golden color to it that's fantastic. And we do have another knife as well with that handle uh, material as well. Um, but the push boot, you just don't get any sexier than that. Feels good in almost any grip. Um, the reverse grip's not as great. That grip particularly is. Um, but when you're holding it with thumb against the bottom of the, of the handle, um, like I had a second ago, it's not the most comfortable in that position. But Every other position is fantastic feeling, far more uh, than you would think from a simple curve as, as uh, the shape there. So it's just absolutely beautiful, of course. I actually kind of don't want to go to the next one because I like this one. But fortunately, the next one's pretty schmexy, as Allison would say as well. So shout out to Allison. What up, Allison? She's in the background. I don't know if you guys heard her. So that's the Bush Hermit. And again, it's the Gold Rush Box Elder Burl, black liners, yellow pinstripes, which really make this thing pop. An eighth inch A2 steel, and uh, that one looks to be a tapered, yeah, it is a tapered tank. I was reading off the long, wrong line. Sorry, guys, it's live. That's what happens. But uh, this has become one of the most popular knife models that we have um, for good reason. It's kind of the culmination of all the experience that Andy's gotten over the years uh, making knives for bushcraft. Um, it's just kind of got every great feature out of a lot of different knife models all combined into one. Um, it's a full figured knife as far as in your hand. It's a very full feeling. Um, fills up your whole grip. Uh, when, you, when you do a fisted grip, you've got handle left over at the end. Um, it just feels good no matter how you hold it. You get a lot of leverage down at the base. Um, as well when you're doing tasks and it, it's full belly. I mean, I can't say enough about this knife as far as being probably one of the best users um, that we make. And there's a lot of consensus on that as well. Um, 
pick one up, see if you think we're right or not. That's fantastic, and you're definitely not going to go wrong with this one because it's pretty awesome. Now, that's followed by one of the sexiest EDC-2s that I have ever seen, and I've seen quite a few of them. Uh, it's got a taper tang on it, black pinstripe on a natural liner. Uh, the handle material is absolutely beautiful. It's a sapphire maple burl. It's just absolutely gorgeous. As you can tell, even there, it's book matched. Um, I mean, the, the, the amount of detail and pop that that handle has is gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. So if you're wondering what the difference is between the EDC-2 and the EDC-1, uh, the EDC-1 was a little more, I guess what I would call bulbous in shape on the handle. It was a lot more of a rounded uh, end on the pommel. Um, other than that, it's very, very similar in shape. Um, this is an improvement as far as I'm concerned. Uh, personally, um, it just fits really well the way the pommel's curved, as you can see right there uh, a second ago. It just really fits in your palm well, no matter how you're holding it. Full four fingers on the handle. Um, it's just really great. It's really comfortable. It's a really good looking knife. It's high leverage because it's got a lot of handle compared to blade length. Um, can't go wrong. If you want an everyday carry, obviously it's named the EDC for a reason. So that's the EDC2 and uh, Schmexy Burl. And uh, here's another fan favorite. This is the F2. Uh, it's called the F2 because it stands for fish and fowl. Um, as you can guess, it's made for fish and fowl, breaking down small game, and it does a kick butt job at it. If you are a fan of or have a hiking buddy, this handle is going to feel very familiar to you because it's the same handle. It's based on the hiking buddy, um, which is just an all around. Uh, as the name kind of implies, it's just a super friendly knife for anybody to use. The size is, is about perfect. If you want a, a larger sized everyday carry, uh, you can still fit it in a pocket sheath really easily. Um, but obviously this one's made for breaking down small game, um, and it's fantastic. And, you know, I don't have any experience in this, but it might be great at cutting your steak, too, when you're in between doing that. Just saying. You'd be the envy of the steakhouse busting this one out. So this one is Crosscut Micarta. Um, it's also got, i find it on the list here. There it is. Uh, burnt Orange for the bolsters, Burnt Orange Micarta. Natural liners, it's in 332 A2 uh, with a skeletonized full tang. Um, got a little bit of lint there on the bullseye. That's not an imperfection. That's just a lint from the, uh, the rag that I wiped it down with uh, before doing the video. Sometimes it leaves some residue. Make no mistake, this thing is perfect. Perfect, perfect. So here's another of the new models. And again, like I said on the F2 in the last one, if the, if the hiking buddy feels familiar to you or, or feels good to you, this is going to feel familiar. Not because it's the same handle, it's not. But just for whatever reason, it's very similar in size to a hiking buddy. Um, it's just the way that it feels. It just feels like I carry a hiking buddy almost every day and it just immediately has a wonderful familiar feel as soon as I pick it up. Um, I personally like this knife a lot. As I've said on previous videos, this is the Warthog, if I didn't mention that. Um, if you are a person who is hard on the tip of a knife, this is not for you. As you can tell, uh, this one is made for precision tip work. It is not meant to be a pry bar. So if you like to do pry bar stuff, and this is not for you. But if you want a sexy knife because you're going to use it the right way uh, and you like to do precision cuts and have something that's uh, pretty awesome, super well balanced, as you can see, uh, this is going to be the knife model for you, I think. So it's a Python micarta with a black bolster, uh, black liner as well. Uh, the spalting on this one turned out great. That's what we call the finish on the knife flats you see uh, up front there is uh, 3D spalting. Um, we, don't, we don't let people know how we do that. Although, we get asked a lot. So this one's Taper Tang. Um, absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. So that is uh, one of the newer models as well, if I didn't mention that. It's fantastic. And another one of the newer models uh, is the CR1. CR stands for Carl Recksteiner. Um, this one's in a handle material we don't use very often. Uh, it's been a long time since we've used it. And that's Black Locust. So it's black liners, white pinstripes, eighth inch A2, and as you can tell, it's got a tapered tang. 
Um, this one is named after Carl Recksteiner because it is fashioned after a knife that Andy bought from him. Uh, that he liked the design towards the pommel there. And again, it's got that, uh, that swell at that third finger at your ring finger. Uh, your ring finger is meant to go right on it. Same as the case with the snow build. You get a lot of leverage on that. But this one's got a little bit longer of a blade. So this one's going to be a great all-around knife. It's going to make a great skinner as well, especially with that extra grip down by your pinky and your ring finger. What a lot of people don't realize is that's where the majority of the grip strength in your hand comes from is those two fingers. Um, so that really takes advantage of it. So you get a lot of good leverage with this knife. So that's the CR1 in Black Locust. And it's going to go quick because there's a lot of chatter already about this one today. So let's get into the big boys. We hadn't had a Forager in a while. This is the Forager. Uh, this one does not have the swedge that you're seeing on some. Um, perfectly fine by me because this one thing this thing is sexy as it is um, the forger here has turquoise burlap natural liners yellow pinstripes 5 30 seconds a2 so it's a thicker as you would imagine it's a thicker steel that we use for this uh, to make it better for chopping what you're going to do um, again that blade shape is fantastic for doing all sorts of things would not use this as a pry bar um, it is perfectly fine for uh, batoning wood, um, if you're careful, like any other knife. Um, but the blade shape on this one uh, actually does pretty well for that, even with that upswept cutlass tip on it. Um, so this, if you want a camp knife, do a little bit of chopping with and something that looks super badass at the same time, the forger might be for you. So you can see the balance point on that that I'm showing you there is well in front of the handle. You can see me kind of awkwardly moving this around because I have to stand at a pretty awkward angle um, to give you guys the in hand and watch on obviously watch the screen too to make sure um, that it's showing correctly so changing positions here you can tell that it, it's a little bit front heavy as you would imagine with a blade that size um, but that makes it wonderful for chopping tasks and things like that as well um, but don't think that it's unwieldy it's just unwieldy because of the way I'm having to hold it uh, but when you get this thing in a firm grip it's very confidence inspiring. You don't have any issues with it. Um, it's also moved the balance point forward a little bit, having that taper tang the way it does. Um, so this thing does still feel light in hand, even for the size, uh, which is pretty amazing. So if you want even bigger, well, okay, we'll, we'll do that for you too. So here's the uh, famous, famously loved camp knife. I'm actually having trouble uh, keeping it in the viewfinder without running into everything behind it. Um, but this one is is beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful camps we've done in quite some time. It's uh, that sapphire maple burl again. Black liners and blue pinstripes really make it pop. 530 seconds on this one. Uh, sometimes you see these in a, in a uh, larger 316th, but this one is a 530 seconds, which is still plenty thick enough for doing batoning and chopping. Um, A2 taper tang on that one as well. Um, this knife model is, I think, the only one that has cut everybody here except Allison. <laughs> so it's, uh, it is quite the knife. Uh, you see me being very careful with it as well. Um, it is great for chopping, but it's also good for close up work as well because you can really get choked up on it. Um, fantastic knife if you just want an all around big knife for the camp, campsites. Um, this is the way to go, or if you just like really big knives, this is uh, this is the one for you. And the handle material is gorgeous, as you can see. So another knife that's large that we've got for you is one from Joey Berry. But this one's not for outdoor use, although I, I guess you could if you just didn't have anything else. But uh, I'd recommend you stay in the kitchen with this one and uh, dice up some veggies and uh, cook your wife a nice meal. She can cook you one too, I guess, but uh, I do something nice. Um, this one is a uh, black micarta. I think it's a black linen micarta. Is that right, Allison? She doesn't know either. I think it's a black linen micarta, if I remember correctly. I don't have it in front of me, but uh, yeah. Um, he told us black canvas, but I think it's black linen. Could be just black canvas, but either way, very, very sexy. Um, Joey's grinds are amazing, which is what I'm trying to uh, articulate here. 
Um, also, you got plenty of knuckle clearance, obviously, which you're going to need for chopping. Um, you can tell right there the way your thumb slides up on that uh, that angle grind that he's got there on the front of the handle. Put your hand in a perfect position when you're doing pinch grip cutting, which I'm going to show you just a second here, right there. Um, the way that fits on, perfect. The way your finger sits on the other side of the handle, it's perfect. Um, like I said, plenty of uh, clearance for your knuckles. I mean, I'm telling you what, guys, there's not, you're not going to find a better kitchen knife than what Joey's putting out there. And right now his prices are still pretty low, which I keep telling everybody. Um, they're going to go up because he's going he's gonna to change some steels up. He's going to change some things up um, from what I understand. And uh, you'd be really good and lucky to go ahead and put together um, a collection of Joey's knives before the prices get too high. Um, but they're fantastic. So I do plan on building my personal kitchen collection up for this bad boy. Uh, not this one in particular. Um, unless you guys just decide you don't like it, maybe I'll take it home. I won't mind that a bit. So this thing's fantastic. Uh, show Joey some love. He's an apprentice here at Fiddleback Forge, JB Knife Works. Follow him on Instagram, Facebook, all the uh, social platforms and whatnot. And uh, just a fantastic knife. I like everything Joey's doing, uh, if you can't tell. But uh, he's doing some fantastic stuff. And uh, that's the collection of knives that we've got going up. 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on mm, right there, fiddlebackforge.com. And go take a look at them, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, it's the first person to finish the checkout. Just because you got it in your cart doesn't mean you're safe. So make sure you get on early. Go ahead and maybe set up a cart ahead of time. Not telling you any inside secrets right there. But uh, that'll help you pick up the one that you want. Uh, and if you buy more than one at one time, there's a good chance one guy is probably shooting for just one knife and he might beat you to it. So it's the best compromise that we can come up with to keep it fair for everybody. And fiddlebackforge.com, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when they are going up. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, uh, comment wherever you're watching this video, and we're happy to answer any questions that you may have. Other than that, we're going to see you at 9 o'clock tonight, and then we're going to see you next week. And until then... Life's too short to carry an ugly knife. See you guys.